After years of scouring the ocean floor, a treasure hunter with a simple motto. Today is the day. Today is the day. Today is the day. Today is the day. It's the mother load. The shipwreck, which had 40 tons of gold and silver and copper on board. When his heirs cash in, collectors grab a piece of the action. A gold chalice, the hundred thousand dollars to open the bid. But this treasure hunt is far from over. Is it true that there's a 40 pound bag of emeralds down there? It's 70 pounds of emeralds. Could you look harder? I'm Jamie Colby, and today I'm driving into Key West, Florida, in search of treasure. You know, years ago, Spanish galleons and pirate ships sailed upon and sank in these waters. More recently, the island's been home to the heirs of a man who became rich and famous searching for the treasure left behind. My name is Taffy Fisher Apt, and I inherited a wreck. I mean, literally a wreck. A Spanish shipwreck. It's an incredible archaeological find, and we keep bringing up more treasure all the time. You must be Taffy. Welcome to the Mel Fisher Maritime Heritage Society. Taffy's father, Mel Fisher, salvaged tons of treasure from the sea. Oh, yeah, solid gold. This is an emerald cross and ring that was found in 1982. Some of his most precious artifacts are in the museum he founded here in Key West. He must have loved the adventure. He did. He was an awful lot like Tom Sawyer. Tom Sawyer had the Mississippi. Indiana native Mel Fisher dreams up his childhood adventures on Lake Michigan. He would go to the lake and he made a dive helmet out of a bucket. How did that work out? He said that it didn't work at all. In World War II, Mel joins the Army Corps of Engineers. Over in Europe, one of his jobs was building latrines. But after the war, this Hoosier is fated for a higher, or maybe lower, calling. He met some gentlemen who were spearfishing in Tampa, and he was amazed that they could go down and stay underwater. They're scuba diving. Mel falls in love with the new sport. He follows his parents to California, where they buy a chicken ranch. A lot of clucking and feathers, but he's moving closer to his dream. He bought a compressor and started filling his own tanks. In 1952, a beautiful local girl named Dio Horton walks in and steps out with Mel. He taught her how to scuba dive, and they decided that they were going to open a dive shop. Together, they lead dive charters to explore shipwrecks off the California coast. Treasure hunting was really a passion for my father. It was full of romance and adventure. Soon, Mel and Dio have a thriving business in Redondo Beach. And three boys, Kane, Kim, and Dirk. My mother was trying to get other women to go diving, so she decided she was going to set the world's record for staying underwater. And she did, 55 hours and 37 minutes. As Dio put it, worst case of dishpan hands in history. She is pregnant at the time with Taffy. Were you born with a wetsuit? I was born with wet feet. <laughs> Eyeing bigger fish to fry, Mel sells the dive shop and moves his family to the Florida coast to become a full-time treasure hunter. He sets his sights on one particular prize. He read about a shipwreck which had 40 tons of gold and silver and copper on board. Her name is Nuestra Senora de Tocha. In September 1622, the Spanish galleon leaves Havana bound for Seville. She's loaded with treasure from Spain's Central and South American colonies. Gold bars, finely worked religious articles, and gold chains that some Spanish officials are trying to smuggle home in their baggage. But a Caribbean storm sends the Atocha to the bottom. Finding her wreck becomes Mel Fisher's obsession. Every morning, he rousts his crew with a simple statement, today's the day. 
And of course, every day my father's saying, today's the day, we're gonna hit it, we're almost there. It'll only take us a few more months and we'll have it all. Finally, Mel's search turns up a couple of musket balls from the Atocha, plus some coins, a gold chain, and an anchor. Then three silver bars, 76 pounds each. He's getting warmer. But then it would kind of piddle off, and he'd say, that's all right, we'll find it tomorrow. And then the next day, today's the day. Mel and Dio's son, Dirk, and Dirk's wife, Angel, pitch in to run the North Wind, one of their salvage boats. They found nine bronze cannons, and that was major. But there was nothing much around those cannons. What are the next five years like? Mostly just empty holes, I'm digging hundreds of thousands of empty holes. Mel is out of money, living on a rundown houseboat. Then in July 1975, a faulty valve on the north wind leads to tragedy. Yeah. What happened? My brother Dirk and his wife Angel and a good friend Rick Gage were killed one night when the boat capsized at sea. And that tragedy on the water didn't deter dad from wanting to be on the water? I think if there was one time ever that my parents considered not continuing, that was it. Tell me about your brother, Dirk. We were all very depressed about it, but we decided that Dirk would want us to continue. And so it actually increased our determination. We were gonna find it for Dirk. So Mel returns to the trail of scattered pieces of the Atocha's cargo, knowing each tiny find is a data point it inches him closer to the wreck site. We find a nail, maybe, a ballast stone, just little teases. Teases that tell Mel he must be closing it. Others sense it, too, including the government, which wants a cut. In 1977, the federal government and the state of Florida claim they own everything salvaged from the Atocha. Mel fights back. He found a lawyer who was in admiralty law and they arrested a piece of the shipwreck and put it in my father's custody. Arresting the wreck is the legal action a marine salvage operator files when he's found an abandoned shipwreck. The law wants to create an incentive for people like Mel to find valuables lost at sea. That's just the start of his battle with the government. It takes seven years, 151 trials and hearings, $1.2 million in legal fees and a trip to the U.S. Supreme Court. But finally, Mel Fisher prevails. No one else can own it. No, it's, it's, it's ours. No wonder you're smiling all the time. <laughs> After he beat the government in court, he said America has one of the best governments in the world because a little guy like me can fight and win. Mel Fisher may own the Atocha, but the main cargo hold is still out there somewhere. Then, on July 20th, 1985, after almost 17 years of scouring the sea, the radio at Mel's Key West office crackles to life. It's his son, Kane. My brother called in and said, you know, good dad on the radio. I got some important news to tell him. What was the news? The news was that we had found the main pile of the Atocha. This 80-foot-long uh, pile of silver bars and coin chests and jewelry was just there, sticking up out of the mud. Is today the day? Find out next. But first, our strange inheritance quiz question. How many sunken Spanish treasure ships lie undiscovered off the Florida coast? Fewer than 10, 40 to 50, or more than 200? The answer when we return. So, how many treasure ships are yet to be found off the Florida coast? The answer is B. The 40 to 50 wrecks likely contain billions of dollars in precious metal and jewels. July 20th, 1985. Yes, this really is the day for Mel Fisher. After almost 17 years of searching, the treasure hunter finally discovers the main cargo hold of the Atocha a Spanish galleon that sank off Key West in 1622. 55 feet down from us, there was this 
big pile of silver bars about 80 feet long. And then money chains, gold chains, about six pounds of emeralds. Six pounds of emeralds. He's lived nearly two decades on the financial edge, been written off as a kook and a charlatan, and rededicated himself to his goal after losing a son and daughter-in-law to the sea. But now Mel Fisher has accomplished his mission. The value of what we found at that time was about 400 million. There were so many people who were doubters, but at this point, every magazine in the world came and wanted Dad on the cover. Mel even gets on The Tonight Show and impresses Johnny Carson with his favorite treasure, a six-foot-long gold chain, which he likes to wear around Key West and show to kids. Do you have a favorite piece so far? Yeah, my favorite piece is a poison cup. It's a solid gold cup, and it has very beautiful engraving. And in the bottom of the cup is a mount for a stone. And if anything with poison was poured in the cup, the stone would change colors. Is that what you like about it, the story? Well, that, plus I found it myself. <laughs> Mel's daughter, Taffy, oversees archiving the artifacts his divers bring up. So the fine jewelry, obviously, is right up my alley. This uh, rosary is unbelievable. Yes, this is a gold rosary with ebony and inlaid. Oh. Mel salvaged thousands of Spanish coins like this one. The cross represented the Ten Commandments. You know the Ten Commandments, don't you? Yes. Well, if you never broke any, I'll let you have that. <laughs> <laughs> Mel shares a big chunk of the treasure with his crew. How much is a secret? But suffice it to say, there were a bunch of new millionaires in Key West. Did your folks and your life change? Did they live bigger? What'd they do? Well, a little bit. It was nice not to have to worry about money anymore, but, you know, they stayed in the same house. After the Atocha, it became more like a hobby, because he didn't have to work anymore. But he loved it. He loves the search and the thrill of finding it. My father said, Taffy, remember, we're only temporary custodians of all of this treasure. Hundreds of years ago, it all belonged to someone else, and then it was lost, and then we found it. And we've been custodians for a while. And hundreds of years from now, someone else will have it. Words of a man who relishes the hunt for treasure more than possessing it. In 1994, Mel Fisher begins a battle with lymphatic cancer. He continues to search for treasure almost to his last days. He dies at age 76 in 1998. What was it like when Dad passed? We had a big celebration of his life. We took his ashes out and put them over the Atocha site on Father's Day the following year. In 2009, Mel's widow, Dio, passes away too, leaving the treasure of the Atocha to her children. What is it like to inherit something that was underwater for 400 years? That's pretty strange. Yeah, it's very strange inheritance and uh, very exciting at the same time. Exciting in part because before Dio dies, she tells her children it's time to begin selling off the Atocha treasure. Selling once, selling twice. That's next. Here's another quiz question for you. According to legend, a 17th century ghost ship called the Flying Dutchman is cursed in which way? The ship can never make port, whales batter the hull, or the crew is struck blind. The answer when we return. So, how was the 17th century ghost ship, the Flying Dutchman, cursed? The answer is A. For hundreds of years, sailors reported seeing the phantom ship aimlessly wandering the seas. For almost two decades, as he searched for the Atocha, Mel Fisher confronted doubt, suspicion, financial risk, and personal tragedy. Yet he never gave up. When he dies in 1998, his heirs inherit the full-time job of running the salvage business and managing the fortune and treasure he left them. And in August 2015 in New York City, they're in the midst of a major piece of business, auctioning off a big chunk of the gold, silver, and jewels from the Atocha. These objects have an intrinsic value, but it goes way beyond that because of the history of how they were discovered. 
Arlen Ettinger, the founder of Guernsey's Auction House, has sold everything from Soviet art to Jerry Garcia's guitar. We'll begin tonight with lot number one, the three silver coins, and 2,000 for them. Mel Fisher's daughter, Taffy, has spent months preparing for this day. It's exciting and a little nerve-wracking. Part of the proceeds will be donated to a foundation Taffy and her husband established in memory of their 12-year-old son, Michael, who died in 2006 of sudden cardiac arrest. Lot number 11, fair warning at 7.50. So we're just hoping that it's appreciated and loved and people bid high. The Fisher family decides this auction will have no reserve or minimum bid for most of the objects. Lot number 83, the silver coin, 950, 1,000 is bid 1,100, 11 is bid 12, 35, and now 3750, any more beyond 3750. Sold here for 3750. The smuggler's silver coin, 18,000 is the bid, 19,000 is bid, and now 20,000. Fair warning at 30,000. Last chance, 30,000 for bidder number 607. And what about Mel's favorite? the gold chain he wore on The Tonight Show just after discovering the mother load. Selling once, selling twice, sold to the telephone for $60,000. Okay, lot number 51, the gold bar. 55,000 is bid and now 60,000. You marvel at their brilliance. How is it possible that these were under the water in turbulent conditions for 400 years and look like they were crafted yesterday? 60,000, 65,000, 70,000. And 75,000 yeah. dollars next, 75,000. Sold for $75,000. A fabulous emerald cross, 85,000 is bid and now 90,000. 90,000 is bid and now 95. Sold for $95,000. Now lot number 53, the gold disc. $60,000 is bid and now 65,000. 80,000 and now yeah. 85,000 and 90,000 is bid and now 95,000 95. on the phone. Selling once, selling twice, sold for 110,000. The uh, gold chalice, 350,000 and $375,000 next, sold here for $350,000. Some buyers get bargains, but the final tally of just over $2 million is a tidy sum for both the Fisher family and Taffy's foundation. Some of the bids were very high, some of the bids were very low, but, you know, everything sold, so I don't have to carry anything home. Maybe we can save some lives, and maybe we'll just go out and find a whole bunch more treasure. A whole bunch more treasure, because wait till you hear how much a tocha booty remains beneath the sea. Excuse me? That's next. What's your strange inheritance story? We'd love to tell it. Send me an email or go to our website, strangeinheritance.com. Now back to Strange Inheritance. Their auction has just raked in more than $2 million, but Mel Fisher's heirs are not done searching for treasure. You see, they not only inherited the fortune that's already been salvaged from the Atocha, but the rights to anything else from the wreck site. How much is left down there? 250 million. What? Dollars worth of treasure. Excuse 250 me? million dollars worth of treasure. Mel used to say, today's the day. His kids predict there will be more days ahead. I saw the sunset last night. And there was a green flash. That means we're going to find a big pile today. We'll find the stern castle of the Atocha that's been so elusive very soon, maybe tomorrow. OK. Have you ever had a real job? Uh, you mean besides treasure hunting? No. Yes. The Fisher family spreads their love of treasure hunting around. Several times a year, they run cruises to the site of the Atocha. It's a chance for even non-divers to search for treasure without getting their feet wet. Today's the day. Using a system called an airlift, divers suck up sediment from the ocean floor right into these troughs on deck. When you see a green emerald with that white sediment, 
You can't miss it. Well, I was digging through the sand. Green emerald popped right out at me. I couldn't believe it. Great start for the day. Is it true that there's a 40-pound bag of emeralds down there? And are you looking for it? Actually, it's 70 pounds of emeralds. Should I tell you green's my favorite color? Four centuries ago, nature intervened, and the treasure of Nuestra Senora de Tocha never arrived at its original destination. But through the labors of one dedicated and slightly obsessive man, it was not lost forever. Now it will be scattered across the world to collectors, museums, and churches. After that, who knows? As Mel Fisher said, nobody holds on to this treasure for long. Mel Fisher's heirs clearly inherited their father's undying fascination with shipwrecks. Taffy told me once you've seen the ocean paved with gold, it's hard to quit. Or as Mel used to say, it's not the find, it's the hunt. And Kim, if you do come up across that big old bag of emeralds, please give your pal Jamie Colby a call. I'm Jamie Colby for Strange Inheritance, and remember, you can't take it with you.